A lot of tanks. Mid lane as well. Karma is going to be one of the big picks. She's already taken away by Fnatic early on. But a lot of other supportive mids can be locked in to just buff up that AD carry in the late game. Morgana, of course, being one of them. Lulu Maybe a Lulu. Well. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting because there are so many AP picks, which in isolation in their lane seem to, to work very well. But uh, Banner can be such a problem yes. uh, for those champions. Well, it can indeed. And straight out the gate, those supportive uh, champions we talked about, Jens. Karma gone, Morgana gone. Gangplank and Swain, I definitely think uh, are RNG have looked up Whippo's match history in his seven professional games. Play both of those. Of course, uh, Whippo likes to play Cyan if it is available. Very safe choice for him. Orn is going to be another pick. And I think, you know, there's a lot of a lot of eyes on this rookie up in that top lane. And yes, he's an EU champion now, but he's only played, as you highlight, Trevor, such a few amount of games. And he got thrown into playoffs due to the injury that Source, of course, got back a month ago. And such an incredible amount of focus here from Fnatic on, on banning out, yes, these could be mids or supports, but really, you know, things to enable Uzi in this bottom lane. Uh, they have seen how incredible of a run he had, you know, throughout the season, but especially in playoffs, he was an absolute monster for RNG, and, and they played so heavily around him, as Jat was saying. Gentlemen, Kaisa is available and open. Is it blind pick, first pick worthy? Yes. Yes. Also and because you get Uzi and you cannot give Uzi Kaisa. Look, just a reminder, of course, it's Reckless versus Uzi. A lot of the fans here in Berlin will remember the Reckless Pentakill as it happened, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. Also worth highlighting, though, Europe did not play on a patch where Kaisa was available in playoffs. This is the first time we get to see Reckless played on the professional stage. On the other side with RNG, they got to play against it and they got to play it themselves. So they know exactly what's going to happen now. And Kogma coming out here from Uzi very quickly. We're well, interested to see what's drafted alongside that. I know a lot of people have kind of had questions sometimes about L the LPL's drafting, you know, specifically RNG's drafting. You know, there was a you know, playoff game kind of drafting this Rakan uh, plus Kogma combo that was kind of uh, questioned quite a bit yeah. as not having enough support for that Kogma to get him through the laning phase. So I'm really interested to see what support they're actually going to try to pair with it. I mean, we've seen again, as you highlight, the aggressive ones, they can still counter pick for Ming if they want to and just get a range support with him. They just love to put him in that mid lane once we get past the laning phase. He just sits there with long range and he tries to clear the wave and farm everything. I want to look at the Olaf though specifically because I'm happy RNG start MLXG. I think he's the correct kind of jungler against a team like Fnatic. Because MLXG, he's extremely active. He kind of plays for himself. He takes a few chances, but he forces plays on you. And we have seen Fnatic during the split kind of struggle against the very fast and aggressive junglers. Yeah, and, and, and while I think Trundle is the obvious answer, Trundle does very well in, against Olaf later in the game. The early game, you can be kind of dominated by this Olaf who has more presence, who has more pressure, and who can get in your face. Well, we'll see what MLXG decides to do, which lanes he tries to prioritize a play around. Phase one for Fnatic locked in, it will be the Braum Kaiser. And we'll see what RNG lock in. And of course, gentlemen, Reckless wasn't the only guy that got pentakills. I do have a clip prepared of Uzi's pentakill. And we'll see what sort of support he's going to get. This was, of course, Uzi's Kaisa. That was game changing throughout the course of the playoff uh, bracket. And RNG really ran it down. We'll get back to that in a moment because Ryze has been locked in. Uh, the best champion for Zhao Hu, a champion where he can go to the side lane, he become a split pusher, but also he can actually use the Ryze ulti to roam down towards the bottom lane if he wants to make a play around Uzi specifically. So this is his go-to pick. One of the things that is kind of nice for this, though, uh, for Fnatic, is the fact that Caps has been such a strong carry for them throughout the split, and he's going to have the opportunity to try to counter pick mid. Of course, RNG can somewhat protect Xiaohu in the picks and bans, but if something like a Casio was still available, that can be a pretty strong matchup into the rise and, and maybe a way in there for Fnatic. Let's see what they decide to do. Really taking their time in this first pick ban. Shen will be the target, removing that from Let Me In. Oh, yeah, removing one of those tanky top laners. Yeah, and I think also Shen will be one of the picks we have to look at a lot during this tournament because we talk about playing around the bottom lane. Obviously, Global's coming from that top side. GP being another one that was banned much earlier in this game. So Whippo's losing a lot of top lane choices. And especially Orn and Cyan, I figured would be his go-to champions if they were available. Because I think Fnatic prefer to have him on a tank and not put too much carry pressure on him. But he might have to actually step up here. Yeah, it is kind of scary for a guy to be seeing, you know, the only champions you've really ever played in competitive band away. This is a rookie player on the international stage yep. going up against one of the most legendary teams in League of Legends history. And you don't get to warm up. You have to be performing from the word go. On the bright side, the one other champion he has played is available, the Choga. We've seen it a lot. Yep. It has uh, shown a lot of appearances. Maokai still up and available as well. Tom Kench will be the support. So really going in there for RNG. And if you look at Fnatic and let's 
pretend they go for a Cho'Gath. They're running with very, very low amounts of engage in this composition, and they are against Uzi on a late game hyper carry where he can destroy their front line. Reckless would have to try and match it on the Kaiser, which is definitely possible because the late game damage with the passive is absolutely insane as well. But it is a Fnatic team that's currently not running with a lot of ways to start fights. And RNG is very clearly oh! trying. Oh, is there going to get the Yasuo Wait, for Cash? That's locked in. Yeah. He's been spamming this champion in solo queue so many times. I've been watching him play, and he just goes completely off. He is so mechanically gifted, and he's so good at executing this specific champion. Will they just go Cho'Gath for a knock-up, and then they can time the Q with the Yasuo ult? They certainly could. I mean, Cho'Gath is kind of the most safe pick here, perhaps, for Bupo. But the thing is, RNG has been targeting him throughout the entire draft. They are setting up for the counter pick top. It's actually going to be a Vladimir here, uh, perhaps worried about the Vladimir into the Cho matchup or something along those lines. But there's potential for Lemmy to play, you know, aggressive fighters, uh, things even, you know, like Kled and Camille and these sorts of picks. If you can focus that top laner, you can put Vladimir way too far behind. Oh, I'm so nervous about this Yasuo pick into the rise. He's the one he European there. player where I'm not nervous just because I've seen him do so well on it. Cho'Gath, of course, is a good matchup against Vladimir because you can just kind of push him in and he can never kill you. And it gets really difficult for Whippo in that case. But he wants to just try and scale himself. Like, this Yasuo pick, it just changes everything. Because no matter what the draft looks like, if he gets ahead in the early game and he starts running to a side lane and just kills everyone, like, he becomes the man to look at. And theoretically, it still could be Yasuo top. I'm really not expecting it, but th this is, you know, a possibility of a flex pick. And we did talk a lot about the ability to surprise teams on day one, coming into a tournament, having the edge as far as, you know, the pick ban and what people are or are not expecting. But you still have to then be able to execute on it. Yes, and that's what we need to look at. Obviously, we had that swap potential, yeah. but it was a fairly anticipated draw for the exception of that Yasuo. That's the one that really caught me off guard into the rise all the pressure on fanatic shoulders in their home studio on home turf taking on royal never give up and it's worth highlighting rng it's pure comfort on their side like most played ad carry most played support with tom kench and you have to rise for Xiaohu, his best champion as well so they're gonna look at us and say we got everything we needed for this draft this fanatic trying to do something crazy Something also that's pretty cool about this draft is you're saying, okay, well, Cho'Gath into Vladimir, yes, you're going to rush a banner. That's going to be pretty frustrating. But you can actually rotate uh, your Yasuo into the side lane, have him laning against the Cho'Gath, and he can deal with that banner minion very easily. Uh, so they do have some plans for that. And Vladimir can then lane up against Ryze fairly well here too. So I think this is a very well thought out draft, but execution is going to be the name of the game. We have to see how these teams are going to perform. Oh, man, the theory crafting hats. Everybody's happy with it. Let's, Let's see. Go. How they pull this off? Will Fnatic or Royal never give up strike first in the midseason invitational group stage? You guys know how to vote. Go jump on Twitter and throw up those hashtags. Let's see who's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's kick off Fnatic versus RNG. Well, let's take a look. Look at level one here. Oof. They're expecting RNG maybe to move in and place an early ward, or is it Fnatic on their side? Ming will be able to spot them. It's not the first time that we've seen Fnatic do some. Shenanigans at level one. They have uh, been creative at times. Definitely. Over the past uh, few months of play. Ah, I lost a level one. <laughs> And I think it's very intelligent, especially when you have a champion like Braum, who's so ridiculously strong at level one. You group up, you, you poke, you prod, you try to look for something, and if it's not there, there's so little cost. But if you can get a summoner, if you can get a level one kill, that can sometimes change the course of a game. And we definitely also in this game, we now need to look around the mid lane. Uh, that's a Yasuo. That obviously makes it pretty easy that's to true. say. Let's yes. target that lane. Uh, yes, uh, that's going to be important in terms of Caps getting off to a good start, rushing that PD as fast as possible. But mainly just with MLXG and Olaf and then Xiaohu's Rise. Like, these two guys are very good at playing together when it comes to shutting down an enemy mid laner. And when you are against a champion that effectively needs to snowball, it looks like that can, that's the obvious lane for MLXG to play around. And then we just need to keep track of where he is. At the moment, uh, top half start for both respective junglers. And looking down the summoner spells, no huge surprises. Conqueror, they're on Yasuo, but all new additions. Which one of these junglers will be able to, to make that first move? We already talked about the stylistic differences between Broxa and MLXG. Has Broxa done enough homework to really 
anticipate what MLA she could do. I mean, I think what Broxa has to do is try to be in position for counter ganks. I don't think you get to make the first move really in the Trundle versus Olaf early game. Uh, MLXG, just due to the nature of the champion, is going to be able to have the initiative there. Uh, so that is, it's going to be more about positioning and being in the right place at the right time for Broxa. Yeah, and he, he's important to actually prevent any of these lanes from falling further behind because just based on the champions, RNG will have to push him effectively every single lane early on. If they didn't also end up dying to a gang from MLXG and fall even further behind, it becomes, becomes almost impossible to play the game. So for now, Fnatic are accepting that they don't really have a lane that can necessarily just push in RNG and they have to just sit back and, and farm whatever they can. The interesting thing is, though, if Fnatic can keep this even, they are a very magic-heavy team. When you're looking at the carries, you know, you have a Cho'Gath, you have a Ryze, you have Uzi on this Kog'Maw. That's so much magic damage, and things like an adaptive can become so important and so powerful for Broxen. So I have to remember, RNG just arrived to Berlin yesterday. Yeah, obviously, flew over from China after they managed to win the LPL split in Surprising fashion, uh, which is weird to say if you don't follow the LP LPL and you just watched RNG play at Worlds, you know, get top four. Of course, they're one of the best teams then, but they came into playoffs in China not as a favorite at all. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, they had to beat WE, IG, EDG, Snake, and it was IG really who was this massive favorite. RNG battled the whole way through the playoffs. Uzi winning his first ever championship, making his first appearance at MSI, and still chasing that international championship. I mean, that championship was definitely on Uzi's back. The team funneled so many resources into him, something that we see a lot. We'll talk on that in just a moment, as MLXG may have an opportunity now Gonna move in with that Predator, sidestep by Whipper into the uh, Sanguine Pool. Takes a lot of damage, potential dive on the cards, but not gonna commit further, no summoner spells used either. Oh, the Young Rooker keeping it very cool there, and just flashing away instantly. And suddenly it's MLXG with the first gank. Broxa is still farming on the bottom side. And one of the things that actually makes that more impactful than it sometimes looks is the fact of where the minion wave is. It was actually stacked near his opponent's turret. So this means Whippo has to TP back to actually be able to shove it in and reset that wave or he will start to kind of bleed out that farm, which makes you more vulnerable to repeat things. Luckily for Whippo, uh, MLXG did not just go straight back to the top lane. Bot lane here. This is uh, something that happens pretty often for Fnatic. Uh, Reckless will go back early, and then Hillisang stays in the lane and try and hold the wave for his AD carry. Sadly for him, Ming and Uzi, they've seen it before. They just force him onto the turret. Reckless is back in lane, though, and now it is time for RNG to go back to base. Well, listen, Uzi on Cogmore, Reckless on Kai'Sa. Let's talk about that in a moment in case there's any follow-up. Let's take a look at the head-to-head -head matchup, of course, because that could be the game-changing play. Look at the CSD at 15, 13 for Uzi, but the gold percentage is very, very high. Ooh, let's see around mid first. Let's take a look. Xiao Hu, and of course the flash already gets chomped on by Broxa. That advantage Fnatic with a successful game. Yeah, really nicely done, and that's no TP actually on Xiao Hu, so getting him low there uh, could force him back to base. And I mean, Uzi's laning phase is legendary. You see that represented in the stats, that CS advantage at 15 is almost unheard of, and you know, even this early on, he is kind of developing that CS advantage, and, and is going to be fairly up on Reckless as he collects all the farm that's pushing towards him. For now, it is just about the farming because uh, none of the teams have been able to actually kill each other. And if you look at the lanes, like bot lane, it's kind of difficult to actually secure a kill against these two very defensive melee supports and two AD carries. In fact, they're just looking to get the rage plate completed as the yeah. first item before they really want to fight too much. And that's why we saw MLXG try topside. And of course, Broxa trying to get caps going in mid, which is something we really want to see from Fnatic because we know that they cannot play this style they played back in Europe where they fell behind in a lot of their games, two to 3,000 gold here on the international stage. They need a more impactful early game, and so far it's fairly even. Yeah, it is indeed. I mean, CS advantage for Let Me in the top lane, plus 10 for now. It's even as far as the other carries are concerned. We'll keep our eyes on how that continues to play out. But RNG definitely feeling pretty comfortable in the first opening game, but as we've mentioned, it comes down to this execution of Fnatic Comp, how they enable this Yasuo, which is such a feast or famine champion, and more often famine on this stage. <laughs> Definitely the case, man. While RNG is looking fairly comfortable, you have to say, Fnatic's early game has gone pretty well when you take into consideration the early jungle advantage should be on the other side. The fact that Broxa you know, is a little bit ahead in farm, has kind of matched the pressure of MLXG, MLXG has no real big advantages. You know, as you hit level six, uh, Trundle can start to really kind of 1v1 and match that pressure. Well, Trundle's gonna try a 2v2 for now. Caps is already used that Steel Tempest was rooted in place. Gonna be able to chase down Xiao Hu and she's the jungler's wave. 
They say hello to one another. And like she's not done. I'm looking at the mini map. There is some wards in the blue buff of Fnatic. This is RNG's wards, rather. And now they're going to start to back away. This could get hairy. Well, this is the focus we talked about around the mid lane. But MXG is now walking into an ocean of control wards placed by Fnatic to try and track him. Brox other side. not to fight it. We'll have to give up because the mid lane is, I believe, currently the slight in favor of Xiaohu in terms of minions. MXG wants to contest, though. Robso realizes he's stood right on top of that control ward, so to clear it out. Of course, we're on Fnatic Vision as RNG are trying to move in. Now, Xiaohu's pushed Caps back, continues to stick around. Smite Fight is on the cards here. Trundle Pillar comes down, and MLXG steals the Sentinel away. Yeah, Brox is just going to give it up. I mean, you can see Xiaohu was making the first move. He is post-6 on Rise, could join with that ultimate more quickly than Caps, who was chunked out a little bit under his turret, and that's going to be the difference there. If your mid lane is pushing, you can contest that. When it's not, he has to play safe. And we also see around the bottom lane, Uzi and Ming just constantly pushing down to this turret here. 50% HP. At this point, here. The ulti you just talked about before he is ill from Jahu can be used down to this bottom side to threaten a potential tower dive and RNG are controlling this bottom side very well and it's it's hard to gank this lane for Brox and especially because Kaiser's early damage is, is not that insane. So Reckless just needs more time, but he's currently losing the matchup. And I do think that RNG has just done such a good job of placing deep vision. You can see that there was actually a ward on the red buff. There's a ward over the dragon wall there as well. You know, they had the pink ward on the blue buff. So they have really been tracking Broxa here also. And you know, as Trundle, if, you are, if you're spotted, your ganks really just aren't going to happen. Uh, your gank consists really of walking up and dropping a pillar and kind of <laughs> yes. hoping you can chase him down. Not exactly the most exciting. No. But of course, we'll see whether or not Brox and Caps can actually combo, uh, use that pillar and last breath a little later in the game. As we're approaching 10 minutes, it's nearly a thousand gold advantage for RNG, and it's just incremental. Look at the CSE in the top, plus 20, plus 10 in the mid lane, plus six in the bottom. It just all of those little inches add up. Yeah, it's just a lot of things about the matchups as we talked about with top and bot lane yeah. pushing and winning for RNG. So not only are the champions in their favor, but also just the way they're executing the early laning phase. The only good thing for Fnatic is the fact that MLXG has not been able to secure an early kill on someone like Caps. He is staying somewhat even in this uh, lane here, but of course he has to concede some of the CS on the Jaws lane. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see just how defensive Xiaohu is actually going, like rushing Ninja Tabbies here, you know, against this team, even with a Vladimir and some magic damage there as well, but obviously pretty concerned about the immense amount of auto attack damage that can come out both from Iyasu as well as the Kai'Sa. Yeah, also the Trundle, if he's around mid, and if, they, if there is a skirmish between junglers and mid laners, that Ninja Tabby could be useful. He like get one. Find out, Insta cleanse into the last bridge. Some damage down into Xiaohu, but it's capped at falling low. Teleport, no, it was Ming that came in with the Abyssal Void. Reckless is here. The gobble down onto MLX. Oh, Reckless Nick. jumps in with a killer instinct, tries to throw down some Akathian rain. Nobody's died yet, and nobody will die for a moment. Fnatic loves to set up plays when Hillisan can move from base towards the mid lane. That's why they start this fight here. They know they can try and get one or two kills, but instead, it is RNG quickly disengaging, so good call from them. Yeah, well played, honestly, by both sides. Hillisan, good on him to be able to match the roam from that Tom Kench ultimate. You know, Ming was very quick to arrive to that mid lane, but Hillisan was already on the roam, and you know, both teams do disengage, but some summoners at least have to be popped on the RNG side. You just feel the tension continuing to build. Opening game of MSI group stage yet. Europe taking on China. Of course, just a reminder, this was the quarterfinal matchup from Worlds, which RNG ended up taking 3-1. And uh, they're fending off this early game pretty well. Azel, you mentioned some of those summer spells. Ming, Xiaohu, and Let Me all missing their flashes. Yeah. But Let Me and Xiaohu got the teleports at least. MLXG as well. I mean, that's four flashes down. And it, it's interesting to see. You know, Let Me obviously had that flash forced in a 1v1 scenario. I'm not sure if that was used to actually you know, cancel a TP or, or at risk of a solo kill or something like that. But you know, Woodbow certainly holding his own up in the top side. And I'm going to be interested to, to track the Vladimir build. In the LPL, you see a lot of, of the Shirelias into CDR boots. They grab a Phoenix Codex and they run straight towards that death cap and not actually completing a Zonia. So we're going to be interested to find his interpretation on it. We also saw Spellbinder from GBM uh, in play-ins, obviously with very mixed success <laughs> if we base it on his performance on the Vladimir. Just to the point about Let Me Splash, he actually flashed in trying to kill Whippo. Okay. He got the feast and everything, but Whippo just survived and managed to step away from the fight. So that is why that flash is gone. But this bot lane turret, Uzi, full control like we see so often from him in playoffs, in the LPL. Like, he's been so insane in every single game he's played so far. And 
Now he's on 20 CS against Reckless. He takes a turret at 12 minutes. And he's not even completing his rage plate yet. I mean, that's solo gold as well, but they're going in mid lane. They are indeed. When this bite comes out, tower first blood secured by RNG. Actual first blood secured by Brox and Fnatic. They've got a four-man stack in the mid lane, so they might get the tower at the cost of the Drake. Yeah, really nice roam again by Hillisang in position to get them. They're trying to trade mid lane turret here. Well, they're going to do their best. The minion wave is dying, though. It doesn't go down. MLXG could come up with that Ragnarok from the south. Decides not to throw that one down yet. Just hits him with the undertow and then starts to back away. RNG got the tower and the dragon at the cost of Xiaohu's life. Fnatic knew there was no flash on Xiaohu's side. So by just giving up that bottom lane, it was going to die eventually anyway. They could try and get at least first blood. And went over to Brox and not exactly the member you want to see get it when you have a Yasuo though in that mid lane. Definitely not, but RNG, you know, back to the scene of the crime here. They stole the last blue buff. Yeah. They're looking to keep this away. They're you know, trying to take as many resources away from Fnatic. Luckily for Fnatic, there's no mana users in the solo lane, so it's not as big a deal. Yeah. Uh, but it is still nice to kind of you know, take any resources you can from your opponents. Let's get the replay once again. It is, as you highlighted, Hillisang coming towards the mid lane. And Caps can set up very easily against the no flash from Xiaohu. And they see two members in the bot lane from RNG's side. So just a very easy kill. Yeah, really well done, honestly. Uh, pretty clean from Hillisang. And the concern becomes really, I, I think, Kogma now. The Rage Blade is complete. He got solo gold for that turret. Uh, this was not a lane bully champion that was drafted to, like, a Caitlyn to take that early turret. They got that with a hyperscaling Kogma. He's up 20 plus CS. He has the solo gold from that turret. And having that earlier Rage Blade completed is massive. Yeah, and I think Reckless is going Essence Reaver uh, on his side, which I don't like that much anymore. I think the Rage Blade build on Kai'Sa is just better because you want to get as much attack speed early game so you can involve your E and you get that stealth for yourself, which is so huge for her. Q got nerfed already, so aiming purely for the early attack damage, I feel like just delays some of the impact that she can have. Well, as it stands, Reckless is still maxing Q and definitely having some sort of delayed impact. Down 1,500 gold along with the rest of Fnatic. Down 30 CS nearly. And of course, they've lost control of that bottom lane. Already, Caps has swapped. He's gone down bottom. We saw Reckless and Hilly defending top. So 1-3-1, one, one, somewhat, enabled here for Fnatic. And to be fair, the Essence Reaver does have strengths of its own. You know, it does scale very well. Essence Reaver plus Pickaxe gets you that Q upgrade. You can then go back, you know, for things like the Rage Blade, the Hurricane, the IE. And when you complete that full build, the amount of DPS you're putting out is incredible and can match and even at times surpass that of a Kog'Maw because it's not dependent on the W like the Kog'Maw is. Yeah, very true. I mean, it's a good scaling build, just very expensive. Mm -hmm. Uzi is strong right now on just one item and that's important because we need to talk about how RNG likes to play the game. It's not group 5 in mid and just A ram it down every single time. It is actually a lot of 1-3-1 one, one split push with let me one side lane, Jahu in the other one and then what's important is that Uzi can hold the mid lane. It gets a bit easier now that he's playing with a rage plate against a not even completed Essence Reaver and that's Ooh. important for RNG. Look at that damage. Yeah, have fun, running by the, the way. Reckless down. <laughs> Rage Blade max stacks plus W just chunks it out. And now Uzi gets lane control. He has a Tom Ken support that can ult to both side lanes. So RNG can now fully pressure the entire map because they can always send multiple members. And that's why they're keeping, you know, so much vision as well. Like you look at all across the map, jungle vision on the on the bottom side as well as the top side and in the river to, to track any potential collapse that could come in on Uzi. And, and as long as he's protected from those flanks, yep. you cannot fight him straight up with the Tom Genge behind him. It's just a great move here. You push your side lanes, you go mid, get a bit of damage, and then you return to the side lanes, you push them out again, and you can yeah. keep doing this. And eventually you get down this mid lane turret. That opens up for a potential rift herald. And suddenly RNG, by just playing very smart, Fairly slow, not just all in aggression, can really get far ahead of Fnatic's. Once again, it's mid lane being pushed, and now they can go towards top side. It's insane. It's only 16 minutes in. It feels like with this amount of map control, RNG could even use the same uh, philosophy to look for a Baron. Now, Caps runs into Xiaohu. Not going to find any follow up. I was waiting to see if RNG were moving south, and that gold lead continues to creep up. It's 2,000. Defensive flash from Reckless there. Really, really 
didn't want to get caught further than that. Yeah, a little bit surprised actually to see him flash that with the Braum in position in front of him. Uh, seemed like a, a very, very respectful flash, perhaps a little bit too respectful. And mid lane turrets is going to go down straight up now. RNG could even go right back to the Rift Tail, grab that, and that would mean the third outer going down here for Fnatic. And while maybe you can fall this behind uh, against some of the, the mm -hmm. competition in the ULCS, RNG oh, oh, is what, what so, so there? good. <laughs> you know, they, they are on a higher level than really probably any of the Western teams right now. And, and that is a scary prospect to be this far down. Yeah, it's typically not the greatest idea to go late game against RNG. Uh, they tend to have some very good carries on their side. And they have a composition, of course, with a good front line based on the Olaf and the Cho'Gath. Here's so RNG are playing the game exactly like we do back in the LPL. Yep. They are very happy with the fact that Uzi is so much stronger than Reckless at this point, and he just gets full control of that mid lane. Oh man, it's just starting to get even more difficult. I know you guys were talking about the early game impact and how RNG sort of neutralized the uh, Fnatic squad. But just to put it into comparison, Reckless's worst CSD at 15 this year was minus 15. In this game, it was minus 25. And that was a first pick Kai'Sa that was locked in, and unfortunately, just hasn't really gone the way we want to. The Essence Reaver is now locked in, but it's going up against a Rage Blade Hurricane Cogmore. It's going to be a long time before we can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, and until you have at least the pickaxe and your upgraded Q, there's there's not really much going on here for the Kai'Sa. Not going to be looking for any fights. And and honestly, at this point, for Fnatic, they are so behind the curve on those items that it's going to be quite some time before they can look for any real fights. And and that's a scary prospect because you're going to be giving up Rift Herald, you're going to be giving up Dragons, and you know when the Baron is up in a couple more minutes, you have to worry about giving that up too. And I've seen multiple times this RNG team set up vision properly around Baron and be ready to just either bait around it or turn for the fight and they have a choker. So there's not even that big chance of a Baron steal happening on the side of Fnatic. Everything is in RNG's favor. It's just a Yasuo pick that I'm looking at saying yep. this is now your win condition if you're Fnatic and Caps is able to push in his lane. Well, let's see what he can do. Follows up with a Q, manages to get the last breath as well. A shield comes up. There we go! Oh! And a steel Tempest for the solo kill. Win condition enabled. That was insane from Caps. So, so clean getting the auto in before the last breath. Playing that 1v1 perfectly. Just straight up outplay Shaohu. Listen, all of the logic centers of my brain are saying RNG in the lead. RNG are looking good. RNG in control. But remember, Locally, Fnatic have played from behind. Locally, Fnatic have got some, some comfort in this scenario. And recently, we've seen how even Kaisers from behind can be game-changing. Uzi himself did it in the playoff run in the LPL. So there are options here for Fnatic if those magnificent moments continue to happen. Yeah, here you mentioned a bunch of champion names. All of his Yasuo, Yasuo, Yasuo right now. And Caps, we had a decent champ select. He's done it so often in solo queue where he just hard carries games on this specific champion because again he's so mechanically gifted as long as he can just focus on himself on a pick where he can take over a side lane then he can become so hard to deal with and it's a huge transition because he was a player last year that didn't even know how to split push he could just sit in the mid lane he's learned all this this split and this was so so nice here it is again from caps a 1v1 against Xiaohu hitting every single Q. There's the knock-up into the auto before the last breath. Flash follow finishes it off. That's just beautifully done. And every kill you get there yes. buys and more time. Every kill you get there buys more time. And when Broxa and Caps double team to kill Xiaohu under the turret, while we were in that replay, gentlemen, they killed him again. Um, I'm not oh. sure if we'll get another replay of that or not. Uh, but here's what happened. Broxa went in, popped the pillow. There we go. Then Yasuo jumped in against the no flash rise and said, smack, you're dead. And that's two turrets. I mean, every kill buys so much more time. The turrets are buying so much more time and so much global gold there. The IE just got completed from a BF sword. The Yasuo yeah, is baby. now massive. And there is a lot of tension in this room because the RNG and Fnatic fans are spread throughout. And just these little moments and swings of power, all of a sudden Fnatic are looking good. They've closed that gold gap. So let's talk about some of the ways RNG can now answer. We know they can't win 1v1 against the Yasuo, so they, I think they have two choices. One is you send down Bing, plus another one in his belly, and you 3v1 try and kill Caps down that bottom lane. The other option is you just rush to the Baron after pushing mid. Caps is not running TP on his side. You have a Cho'Gath, and you have Uzi who can just destroy the Baron, and you force the team fight against Fnatic. Exactly, and no matter how strong he is in that 1v1, there is still an exhaust on Ming. There's Tom Kench to deny you know, that target from the Yasuo, and 
And that becomes very tough. And there you can see Xiaohu getting taken down yes. in that dive, which resulted in another turret. All right, so let's take a look. No vision north of the river for RNG. If they step forward, Rox and Caps can find themselves a target. Caps is going to hold on to the trigger for now as Reckless is making his way forward into the lane. They will get the flash from Ming, but nothing else. So the very smart thing about this little move from Fnatic was in case RNG just wanted to push mid and rush straight to Baron, they would have walked into Caps and Broxa, but RNG, they knew, okay, we, we don't see these uh, players at the moment. We have to just stay back, and let these now jump in Caps. Let's see what sort of can happen. The silence comes up. Very good blade, but Caps will still get run down as the unstoppable Ragnarok Mermel XG is chasing him. Finally going to slice and dice his way out, but Caps goes down. And there we get multiple members from RNG jumping onto him. Main coming with that ulti. Four members of Fnatic alive to try to defend. RNG not starting the Baron yet. Trying to trap them, maybe? Yeah, and, and they have the option to just push top. I mean, they still have the Rift Herald, so they're just going to drop the Rift Herald and look to push an inner turret here. Uh, but Fnatic with a pretty nice response, pushing mid, you know, knocking down that mid outer, so at least able to get a turret. And, and Caps bought a lot of time there without even having his flash available. Yeah. That dash over the wall was so sick, and a lot of nice side steps there, but just not enough to get him away. Still very well played. Oh, man, it just continues to build. The Rift Herald will get taken out now by Reckless. He uses that Ekathian Rain, uh, making his way towards those second items, by the way. Essence Reaver, Pickaxe, as well as the Shard. Two item spikes slowly creeping in, and Azale, we're going to get some, some answers from Whippo's build. He's got himself that need needlessly large rod, got himself the second one and the Void Staff. So he's going to go that sort of death cap route. Yeah, I mean, he's looking very strong. You have to look at Broxa here as well. When you're sitting you know, on this Olaf versus the Trundle at this point in the game, I certainly favor the, the Trundle very heavily. The Zeeks is already completed. Uh, could be building towards you know something like a Knight's Vow or maybe just a, an adaptive helm against all this magic damage. But that is going to add a significant amount of team fight pressure. With the Challenging Smite plus your ultimate plus Zeeks being channeled, uh, that is really, really strong. Also looking back then at Reckless and this is Reaver. Currently upgraded his Q because of okay, above 100 AD. No upgrade yet on his E, so no stealth. He's only at 84% attack speed right now. Still needs to get up to 100% on this Kai'Sa. So he's still waiting a little bit, but the damage will get there eventually. Yeah. And as long as Fnatic do not lose the Baron, they should be able to stop the bleeding. Yeah, and honestly, they, they've closed the gold gap a little bit here, thanks largely in part to Caps and is playing the side lane with Broxa. And you know, we're going to see Reckless building towards a Rage Blade now, which will give him that E upgrade. And then when he eventually gets to an IE, his damage is going to be insane. But you still do see Uzi you know, kind of outpacing him as far as itemization, and despite some things going bad for RNG. When IE is complete for Uzi, the damage output there will be absurd. Well, it is complete now so those three items are there and of course for caps he's the next sort of franchise player for Fnatic. there's a lot of information on him on that eyes and eyes on msi episode but when Fnatic picked him up a while ago this is what Fnatic were hoping to see the rebuild of Fnatic, trying to bring them back to the international stage trying to get them back to winning ways and they finally done it after two years they won spring and they're doing okay against rng but they still have a gigantic hurdle ahead of them and nothing should stop RNG from controlling mid with this insane power spike on Uzi, except for Caps leaving his side lane and walking to mid lane. It's what happened the last few minutes. So because Caps managed to snowball so quickly against Xiaohu, it's actually opened up now for him to become the biggest team player, because he's stopping mid lane control from happening, and therefore the Baron, it's a little bit harder for RNG to rush it down. Definitely is an oh, 1v1, perhaps. Well, let's take a look. Escape from Xiaohu. Everyone wants to 1v1 Xiaohu. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Uh, but not going to happen there uh, for Bupo, still nicely done. But you have to talk about, you know, while the fact that Uzi has an incredible amount of damage in this build, you know, he had a lot of kind of the supportive things banned away from him. There's no mid lane Karma or Morgana. There's no shielding coming out from a Lulu. So he is still somewhat vulnerable if he gets caught. But look at Caps Whoa. going forward. Whoa, Caps chunks out 60% of MLXG's damage with a Phantom Dancer IE. Now that's the Smite user that's forced away. How spicy are Fnatic feeling? Well, once again, it's Caps around the mid lane because he knows he doesn't need to do a lot more individually up in that top lane. He just keeps controlling Fnatic's middle of the map and it just buys more time for Reckless to try and get enough items to actually deal damage. You've also got to say, with, with Bubba already having you know, his death cap, his void stuff, his, his three items completed on top of that with that Shirelius, going to Baron now, is, it becomes very risky for RNG because you're grouping up and the damage amp coming out of that can be absolutely terrifying. Yes. 
And talking about damage amp, uh, Death Cat picked up there. So Whippo continues to scale. Obviously, Caps continues to scale. 26 minutes in, the gold lead is irrelevant. It doesn't mean a thing. And then it just brings us back, gentlemen, to what you both said in Picks and Bands. Execution, execution, execution. Also, the very easy call a cost a point to make every time. Yeah. <laughs> execution, that's Damn okay. Damn it, secret smart. Yes. <laughs> this is hard. They you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> Well, let's take a look. Caps is leading the fray, sweeping Blade once and twice, looking for the Tempest. And the key has not been unlocked yet, but Caps for himself another BF sword, and everybody in RNG is terrified of it. I mean, he's looking like he's working towards that Bloodthirster. I'm a little bit surprised that he's not going for a QSS when you are playing up against Xiao, who that, that lockdown from Rise can be so devastating to Yasuo in a team fight. He does have a cleanse, but... See. Maybe not enough. Yeah. We get to see uh, if it actually ends up hurting him Ooh. in some of these fights. Fnatic will get a Cloud Drake. Okay, when are we going to fight again? All right, let's put some expectations on this. RNG have no longer got control of mid, which means they can't set up for the Baron. Does that mean Fnatic kind of want to or not? I mean, I think RNG should still be able to get control of that mid lane. When they see Caps in that side lane, when he's pushing out the lane, like if you look at the minimap now, it's a giant wave from RNG pushing down. So when Caps goes to take that wave, Uzi can hard commit to the mid lane, and that opens up for the river at least, and RNG can try and force a fight. The problem is, do they want to take one near the Baron area when, as Azale highlighted before, there's a Valley Fed Vladimir now? Do you want to stand as a group against a Yasuo ulti? Like, it can actually get pretty difficult for RNG to play the 5 on 5 in the small areas. It does get really risky when both teams are playing so well around Vision, you know, not being caught off guard. Uh, I think Fnatic is happy to continue scaling up, is happy to continue playing side lanes and trying to avoid this team fight until perhaps the Yasuo is even at a stronger point, until Reckless has caught up a little bit more in itemization, at least has his Rage Blade. Yeah, I think also eventually a GA comes in from Caps' side, and that is really big because it allows you to play even more aggressive. Yeah. That's kind of the problem for Fnatic now. If, if the fight did break out and Caps gets caught instantly and he just dies, that is currently the strongest player on the yeah. team. And suddenly we're then mainly looking at, at Whippo on the Vladimir, and he's currently just been farming. Of course, the one thing that we haven't seen, because we've not seen gigantic uh, team fights, that wind wall and that unbreakable wall can do wonders against a Cogmore. He's got the Hurricane, he's got multiple bolts that are going to spit out. When we eventually get to those team fights, let's see the timing on those abilities and how. Uh, how game-changing they can be, because RNG, they've got mid, they've pushed it down, I'm looking at the vision, they've got some shallow wards in Fnatic's territory, but they're pushing back to clear it all out. Yeah, we can see uh, Xiao is still down on the bottom side of the map. He does have his teleport available if anything were to start, but you know, trying to continue keeping this pressure up, and we have to remember that Caps does not have a teleport, so while he wants to play side lanes, yeah. it can become more difficult, because if you show yourself here, that could trigger RNG to go to the Baron. That's the thing, Caps needs to kill Xiao so he can't just TP to, to a Baron itself. Interesting enough, the Rise has actually gone for Banshees in this game where you would or maybe think, well, you need to go out last because you're against a bunch of physical damage, especially the Yasuo. I think Jahu is saying if he stays far enough back when the fight starts, he doesn't get instantly CC'd by something because of the Banshee, then he will not be the target for the Yasuo ult. But... I mean, I, missing a, an hour at this way. point. If it works exactly that if way, it works that the Trendle like that, great. negates the instant engage. Oh, but not having more armor here, just is tricky for him. I mean, he's of course one we wanting the Vladimir, so there will be some value from the MR. Exactly. I mean, Bupo is, is the one with teleport here, right? So he is going to be the one having to answer in bottom lane. You know, the Blood th Thirster completed for Caps is going to give him a bit more safety you know, with that Blood Thirster shield in the team fights. And in the 1v1, it becomes incredibly hard to kind of out damage that healing that is coming through. But I think it makes a lot of sense to have Caps top side of the map yeah. with that cleanse, have Bupo on the bottom side, and try to play the map that way. Uh, look at Reckless, by the way. He's picked up his Infinity Edge, and oh, this wow. arm race continues to escalate. The Baron is very obviously a big deal, with three Cloud Drakes having been killed. The next will be a Mountain. That's a little bit juicier to fight for in the later stages of the game. Yeah, seeing him go for, for the IE there instead of an extra dagger, he still doesn't have the E evolved. He will get it with one more dagger or another level up, yeah. um, but certainly delaying that very, very far. Caps looks like he wants this. Oh, the Wind Wolf comes down, so Uzi's damage not going to come out. Where's the Tempest? Flash away from once again, just on Ming. Uzi dancing on the edge of danger. But RNG are now the ones just buying time and stopping Fnatic from rushing down at Baron. And that allows Jahu now to get this bot lane turret. So everything that before was Fnatic having to stop RNG from getting an early objective is now actually RNG doing the same. 
and it allows them to have this rise with the Banshee, split push against Whippo. Oh, it just continues to make me ask more questions. I've never this seen a very insane I've game never despite seen so few kills. A Yasuo game goes so slowly. Not moves yes. one way or the other. Right, the engage is going to be on MLXG. He flashes over. Insta flash from Caps. That's one. Let me's going to be the next target, but the top tower not even available. And the rest of RNG have responded. Jungler is down, and the flash is off the choke. It's just become so hard for them to steal. But Caps is just going to pick up. Oh, off. Caps just gets eaten alive. The rest of Fnatic now are inside the pit. Hemo Plague lands onto three for Whip. But Baron is hammering away. The gigantic heal will bring Whippo back to full HP, but Xiaohu's on the inhibitor turret. Yeah, they didn't actually handle that right. Caps had such a good pick, but then he went to stop the Blast Cone, so Let Me wouldn't be able to Blast Cone in and feast the Baron, but he gives up his life to do it, meaning they lose the inhibitor turret on the bottom side. RNG is the one who has priority on Baron now. And they're going at least a round. They can just start it here because Caps is dead for another 30 seconds. He's the only player they have to be afraid of and they have the Cho'Gath and of course Uzi ready to kill it. So this should be RNG getting Baron and they also got bot lane in it, but they're not starting it. They're actually playing it just super, super slow. I would have thought they'd at least try to get the now. out of okay. Whippo. But... They were just waiting for Ming. They are waiting for Ming with ult. That's fine. Now they can do it. It's there. Fnatica has base. They're not even going to check it. So this is just a conceited Baron here 32 minutes in. Big advantage going over to RNG. I think uh, right before there, Cap saw that MLXG, for some weird reason, has gone Black Cleaver in this game. Instead of just rushing a Randuance, which is such a fantastic item against a Yasuo, just get it going full tank as fast as possible. So he's actually squishy. That's why Cap can jump in and effectively kill him in two seconds. But as you said before, he is ill. The fact that he then is not able to actually just run back to his team or just decide to do it means that Uzi. The very fed to carry who we've been highlighting all game long just kills him. It was it was tunneling way too much on the blast cone. He knows, okay, jungler's dead, feast is the only way to steal it, his flash is down, how does he get in? It's the blast cone. I'll go over there, I'll knock that down, but in doing so gives up his life and and that means they can't get the Baron. And how much more? Baron buff secured by RNG. They extend that gold lead. Itemization continues to come in. Hourglass is now picked up for Xiaohu to complement the Banshee's Veil. Randuans put him in the top lane. More of Mamortius for Uzi. And yes, Fnatic get a Consolation Dragon, which may help later, but they have to fend off a Baron-empowered siege. Let's see what happens around mid, because the RNG is setting up their own little trap. All right, MLXG comes out. The Undertow falls a little short. Kill Instinct is available. In goes Hilly. Gets a knockup. MLXG is already down. He's got no enough armor or hit points. Let me the next target. He's being melted by Reckless and Caps taken out. All of a sudden, RNG with Baron. They lose two members. The one positive for Fnatic was all the outer turrets were already dead, so they had a lot of room to move and just move for a fight. <laughs> they didn't have to sit back and defend the siege. They could actually just force and engage. And it was RNG setting up in that little brush. That's a fanatic tactic. You can't do that against them. <laughs> Didn't work out. All right, Banshee's Veil pops by Xiaohu. That was the W of Reckless that connected into the Baron team. That's the fourth tower of the game for Fnatic. They're now setting their sights with Inhibitor mid. 25 seconds for Levy, 8 seconds for MLXG. The Inhibitor should fall. And Fnatic will once again even this game out. Yeah, very well done. You know, denying really anything to be gotten there from RNG. They still have a minute 20 on the buff, but Fnatic camping out a brush here again. We'll, we'll see if RNG makes a mistake to check this. Well, MXG's got that Randuance, like but he's not tanky enough to survive for very long. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the power of the Trundle, right? He's, he's not built full tank, and then Trundle ulting you on top of that, but RNG, oh, maybe look at this fight, they're keeping in. Uzi with the spider senses, he manages to interrupt the living artillery. Brox is on the front line, forced to run for his life. Devour from Ming by so much time. Oh, Brox is taken out. That's the most fed member. Whippo follows immediately thereafter. Fnatic get caught out. Killer Instinct goes down for Reckless before he's shut down. That might just be game. Yeah, I think this is just going to be game here. It's only two members alive, and it's, it's the support in the jungler. Uh, the bottom inhibitor is open. Oh, he's going like to stop the recall. He is it, indeed. But... Fair Feral scream for the silence quiets the Fnatic fans. Fnatic all in to try and kill Uzi, but there was a Tom Kench right next to him. And the moment Uzi popped out of that belly, he turned around and he just destroys Fnatic. This was an insane game, back and forth. And the living artillery that stopped Fnatic's backs. That's what turned this game around. RNG are waiting for the minions to pour into the base. The Nexus turrets are falling. The Nexus is killed, and RNG take down Fnatic.
What a crazy game there. All, as you said, almost all decided by Fnatic, deciding to camp that brush, getting spotted out. RNG makes the immediate collapse. TP comes in. They win the one team fight they needed, but Fnatic made them work for it. The Yasuo was very oh, impressive yes. from Caps, and it just never really all came together. If we look at it, like, Caps and Proxa were the only two members really finding success. If you look at them getting kills, and then Hillisang with the early roams being very successful. But on the side of RNG, they had this fed 80 carry. They were just yep. sitting ready to get a five team fight, and he needed one towards the end. And they were dominating even in the 2v2. Uzi and Ming in the straight up 2v2 took down that bottom turret so ridiculously fast, got big CS advantages, and you know, Uzi was just much more effective than Reckless in this yeah. first game. You know, Reckless certainly going for a more atypical build, uh, skips the Rage Blade completely yep. in this game, uh, and wasn't really able to make it work out. Definitely looked like a player, of course, who's not been able to play this on the competitive stage just yet, because it was disabled in the European playoffs. Very important for RNG, though. First game they played, they arrived yesterday. Yes. They played the last game of the day now. If you lose yes. that first one, man, it's... Uh, Five, six hours with jet lag, getting and, ready for the and next one. what time. a way to win as well. Uh, tempered, controlled, even in the face of this Yasuo that could 1v1 absolutely anybody. Yeah. RNG did not expose more weaknesses than they needed to. Shahu got killed twice, and then he didn't get killed again in that side lane. You can see just how serious RNG looks, though. They are focused on the next games. They got this win, but it was no, by no means a dominating win. It was no, by no means you know, one-sided affair. So they are focused on improving, focused on the future competition. Focused on the future composition. That is Kingzone Dragon X at the end of the day. Way, way, way later. Before that, though, and for more on how RNG won this game, let's head to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much. Quick shot. I mean, what an ending to that game. Kind of seemingly 